Hi, Peter here, and in today's blog, I want to talk about maybe something a little bit controversial, and that is, does it take a crisis in someone's life to get them to finally meditate? Now, you might think that I'm going to say, no, of course, you can meditate at any time in your life. But in fact, I'm not going to do that because I think to a certain extent, the above statement is true. And that is for people not necessarily to try meditation, but to really take it seriously and get into meditation. I think for a lot of us, we need some sort of a crisis in our life to actually take it seriously. So I'm promoting meditation all around the world, as you know, and I mentor people who run classes. And still the difficulty is, even though there's a lot of interest out there, it's getting people to come and stay at their classes. Actually, getting the interest isn't so hard. There's often people uh, will come to groups, but they stay three or four weeks or maybe a bit more, a bit less, and then they stop coming. And if you ask these people, you know, did you not like the class? They'll say, no, I loved it. If you ask them, don't you think it's good for you? They'll say, no, I think meditation is really good for the mind. There's so much scientific study. I know it's good for me. Uh, if you ask them whether they, you know, didn't like the people, they'll say, no, I love the people. I love the class. And so you ask them, you know, why did you stop coming to the meditation classes? And there's a million excuses, of course. You know, the cat got sick or... Uh, friends came to stay, or I had work commitments, or I had this commitment, or, you know, and some of them are, are completely legitimate. But the fact remains that a lot of people find it very easy to procrastinate and not go along to meditation class or not do their morning meditation. And it really takes a lot of dedication to begin meditation. So, Often that's uh, either very strong-willed people who realize that there's benefit in meditation and then just stick with it, or it takes someone where they've had quite a, a, a literally a crisis, you know, maybe a loved one has died, uh, they've struggled with depression, they've been reje rejected in some way, they've lost work, they've had an, a serious mental, uh, sorry, a serious physical uh, or mental um, illness and two things happen one they take life a bit more seriously they realize they need to work on their own mind but also when for example you lose something that is of great value to you the rest of the world seems a bit hollow and it creates a sense of disengagement or detachment from the world so you're not pulled towards those other things because you invested, you know, a great deal. Say, for example, someone that you dearly loved, that you made your life complete, passed away from you, and you feel like there's nothing left, and everything in the world tends to have a, you know, not such a sweet taste after that. And so you're pulled more to the spiritual side of things. And so a lot of the people that I know are good meditators have had difficult experiences in their past. Again, of course, that's not the case with everybody. Um, you know, I myself haven't had uh, difficult experiences. I've struggled with various uh, social anxieties, that sort of thing, but not, not in any major way. Uh, I was just uh, very fascinated with meditation and what it could have bring you. Now, when you do, of course, get to a, a higher um, level of meditation, a deeper meditation, and you do experience the bliss of meditation and you have a clear uh, connection between the good things that are happening in your life uh, and meditation and the way you feel about certain things, you know, particularly if you're obviously getting blissful meditations, then that can act as a motivation for you to keep up your meditation practice. So that's great when that happens. But realistically, it, that doesn't happen for people when they begin meditation. And there's a period where they've, they've got to meditate every day or do long meditation retreats when they're sitting with pain in their back or pain in their knee. And 
they're incredibly bored, so they have to push through that. So have a think about it. Does it take or will it take a crisis in your life before you decide that you're going to be serious about meditation and get it started? And how can we get other people to learn mindfulness and meditation that we know is so good for them? So it's an interesting question. And I just want to give a sneak peek because there may be something coming in the future which may force us to do this. And I'm going to talk about that in next week's blog. Thank you.